All right, so chapter five, Rise of the River Valley Civilizations, part three, India and China. So looking at India first, and uh, more than 5,000 years ago, the Indus River Valley uh, became another one of these first centers for human civilization. In this region, as in Egypt and in Mesopotamia, uh, a river deposited, deposited rich soil over the neighboring plains, so the plains that were near the, the river. Uh, and this happened during this annual flood, which we talked about in the other two regions. So looking at their agriculture and looking at their, their building. So their farmers grew barley, wheat, dates, and melons. Uh, food surpluses allowed people to build large cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Hopefully I got that pronounced correctly. Each of these cities had more than 30,000 people. So more than 1,000 cities and settlements along the Indus River Valley uh, have been excavated. So archaeologists have found 1,000 uh, cities and settlements in this area. So the artifacts found in these uh, settlements suggested a technologically advanced urban culture. And that's the key word, urban culture. In other words, these guys were, were city people. So what they found were dockyards, granaries, warehouses, brick platforms, and protective walls for a lot of these cities. They were among the first urban planners with almost all their houses connected to public sewers and water supply. So these people were known as the Harappans, and they were also the first to make cloth. So trade and collapse, trade was an important part of the Harappan uh, economy. Many small clay seals, uh, probably used for trading purposes, have been discovered by archaeologists. That's why they know they, they trade. That's why they figured that they traded so much. They also had, uh, they also found kilns for making pottery and evidence of the use of metals. The Harappans developed their own form of writing although scholars are still unable to decipher it today. So no one knows exactly why the civilization collapsed. A lot of it has to do with probably what we, that we can't decipher their writing, but uh, it, it happened very suddenly. And here's some different uh, settlements and different buildings that you'll, you'll find around that area. And here's their writing down here. So what are some of the achievements of the Rappan uh, civilization? Uh, of course, you had urban planners, uh, they had sewage systems, they had water, uh, they also developed metals, uh, they had kilns for making pottery, uh, and they were one of the first to actually make uh, cotton into cloth. So China. So about 500 years after the Indus River Valley started, uh, China's first civilization emerged in the fertile plains along the Honghe River. So looking at their agriculture, just like the Nile and just like the Indus River uh, valleys, they had fertile soil along the Honghe River that had periodic floods. We've talked about that with all of them so far. And around 4,500 BC, uh, the people of the Honghe began growing millet. And what they later, in millets, this down here kind of looks like, almost looks like small corn. Uh, they learned how to farm soybeans, which is one of their, their, their big foods still today. They raised chickens, they raised dogs, and they raised pigs. And this is a Chinese chicken here. This is what's called a silky, kind of neat. And uh, they actually had black skin. So government around 1700 BC, a ruling family or a dynasty took power in China. And they built the first Chinese cities and established uh, their capital around Anyang and near the Honghe. So in this area right in here. And what the first, the name of the first dynasty was the Shang, and they ruled with the help of powerful nobles. Nobles are what's going to give you your power and taxes and things like that. So the Shang kings were military leaders. Uh, they were also high priests who offered sacrifices to their royal ancestors. So China's contributions, a lot of it was, was cultural contributions. So the people living along the Honghe were sealed in many crafts. Uh, they were able to uh, make bronze. And a lot of that stuff is still around today, still sur survives from that period. Uh, they also had superior weapons. They had ceremonial vessels, so things used in uh, funerals and things like that. Uh, they were also the first ones to make silk textiles from silkworms. And really, this is where you get your silkworm. So here's your silkworms, here's your cocoons, and that's where the, the silk thread comes from. So finally, they were able to develop a writing system with pictographs, which is kind of like the hieroglyphics that we saw with the Egyptians. And these pictographs are eventually become characters. So each character represented one word, and the pictorial characteristics uh, 
often these were pictorial characteristics often with only minor modifications so one little thing on the on the character would change and it would change the word and these are still uh, used in written Chinese language today but again they've been modified and even those speaking different dialects use the same type of characteristics <laughs>